you want to build a massive chest, you have to stop by expressing it right now. Welcome to Heinz Seniors Coaching Up. Get access to the P3AK High Intensity Training eBook and its exclusive video tutorials. Commit with Heinz Coaching right now and be provided with a year of meal plans, training programs, and more. www.p3akday.com. There is no room for the littles. Uh, you're funny. <laughs> episode of Iron Rage. I'm Dave Palumbo and sitting in for Lee Priest today is King Kamali, our good friend. And of course in studio here I got my uh, other good friend Mr. G who's been joining us all day today here. And and Baxter. Uh, Baxter who's eating. Baxter's trying to get Mr. G's uh, protein cookies here and he's trying to, he's trying to eat them. <laughs> he did get some. Yeah, oh, oh you, got, you got a few crumbs off the floor. King what's up man? What's up, brother? What's going on? How you doing? You looking big and uh, as usual? Yeah, man. Eating, training, having a good time, just uh, trying to get uh, over this incredibly shit cold weather. That's it. Uh, you know, I I know that you're up there because your daughter, but I, you, you got to somehow get your daughter and 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 kidnap her down to Florida because, man, you, I can't believe you're still up in New York, man. Yeah, it's it, it's it's crazy, crazy, crazy. She's starting. To, I mean, I, my son and my daughter, they're both getting tired. Your son, by the way, got your son too. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, this a bunch of my boys just came down there to Florida. Yeah. For 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 four or five days, and they blew it out and went to Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> they were sending me pictures with Trump. I was like, what the fuck? Just man? by Mar-a-Lago. You know, yeah. you know what's funny? It's, when I was in New York, I would go to Florida for vacation or for a show, whatever, for a week, and I'd be like, oh man, it's so beautiful down here. It's so great to vacation down here. Why I never said in my head, hey, dummy, why don't you just move down there and live down there? Because I didn't have any ties to New York. I mean, I had some family up there, but I could have convinced people to come down here. I don't know why New Yorkers feel like it's like a privilege to go to Florida on vacation, but this, but you just can't live there. I don't know why. Because it's it, because it's hysteria. It's it's a misconception. People think yeah. New York is so great. Oh, New York, New York. Yeah. New York is disgusting. Potholes, <laughs> smelly. Smells like cat piss. I mean, it, 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 guys like us who lived up here for 10, 15, 20 years, yeah. we know what New York is. Yeah. But to the rest of the world, it's sex in the city. You know, they watch that and they're like, oh, New York. That's not fucking New York, yeah. man. <laughs> I think, you know what it is? You get used to a certain way of life. I grew up, I, you know, you're not from New York. You're from a, a little further south, Virginia. But I grew up in New York and, you know, I didn't know anything else. I thought that's where you stay. You know, you're in New York. You Maybe you move to a different place. Like I did, I moved from East Meadow to Seaford because I wanted to be on the water. But you don't leave New York. You were in New York also for your whole life until just recently you moved down to Florida. Yeah, yeah. so my kids got old. But I mean, I, if I would have known better, I would have came down here. I mean, it's bo it's booming down here, by the way, too. King, you would do you would do amazing. Yeah, you'd kill it down here. Oh, yeah. You'd kill it down here, yeah. Because you know what? Yeah, if you my, have, that, think, if you have sister, the New York mindset, the work ethic down here is not the well, same as it up there. You will, you'll, you'd blow it out of here. New York. That's yeah. why New York is, is so competitive. The top business people, the top of the top of there. So if you're in that mix and you're able to make money, you're going to be like a savage anywhere else. Yeah, you know what I mean? Kill it down here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's that whole mentality of, you know, if you're a uh, North, Northeast, we're tough, we're this, right. we're that. You get to a point, you're like, you know what? I'm tired of minus five. I'm tired of <laughs> slipping on ice. Yeah. I'm slipping. I'm, I'm tired of black ice and my car is slipping. Left. No, I'm tired of that, man. Right, right. really am. You know, like if he came down here and opened the gym, it would be packed with people. Is, yeah, for real. Is that what? So is that what? King, what do you do? Do, do you mind me? What do you do for? Do you have a gym right now? now right now, Train. I got stocks. I got some money put aside and some <laughs> other things. But um, I do most of the stuff like my play money. It's all uh, online coaching. Coaching. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you make a living or for co or for coaching. Yeah, online, online coaching. It's, it's, it's the easiest way to make money for. Yeah. A, a retired professional Absolutely. athlete. Sure. You have the whole world at the palm of your hands. That's it. It's hey. amazing, right? If, imagine if you had this when you were first started out as a yeah. pro. I mean, well, we're too distracted then. But you know what the truth is? And people mm -hmm. always are worried. They, 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 someone's going to take my clients. There's so many people that need coaching. 
that there's not enough coaches in, no. in a million years out there to cover all the people that need coaching. So my clients are not going to be consumed by your clients or by his clients. There's enough for all of us. And all you have to do is put your information out there, be social or be active on social media. And people, if they resonate with your personality, they can, they're going to sign up with you. And that's how it works. Well, you know? a, there's a new big crop. The All the, all the, MMA, the MMA mixed martial arts is... is Expand. That's Boom. huge. That's another it's whole. Booming. Thing. Yeah. That, All yeah. these guys, King. When I was tra training at Nick Catones at a, uh, an MMA UFC place down in in uh, the Jersey Shore, they they going on on wrestling diets to get. To, they for, don't know any better. And what's happening is a lot of times the guy the, the, the day the day before the weigh in, they're weighing in. And some of these guys because they didn't eat, do it right, they can't make the fight because their electrolytes are all off. They're passing out. And then they, or they're gaining like 30 pounds in a day. Yeah. Now that's, it doesn't matter if you're heavy. That's not good. No. I told the guys, you should be, you should, guys should have, have bodybuilding coaches like, like King Kabbalah, like Dave, yeah. put you on a bodybuilding diet, you know, and, and this way you eat your way. You should be eating your way to your, to your thing, not <laughs> sucking, not right. going to sign. They try to lose 20 pounds of yeah. water in the last day. Well, you day. probably know, you, you probably. We could do, we could do 10 shows. Yeah. At. <laughs> Five hours each about idiots out there claiming that they're coaches and they're gurus and they know what they're doing. Most of my clients are people who want to have nothing to do with social media. Yeah. They just want to look good for their 40th or 50th. Right. Gotcha. Then they start looking better. Then their husbands or wives come along. Right. They're like, hey, I would like you to help me. That's what most of my I hate bodybuilders. <laughs> I can't. They're very high maintenance. They're high maintenance, exactly. They're high maintenance, and they're they're this and they're that, and then they, everyone thinks that somebody out there knows something you don't know. There's a right. magic potion out there. No, it's not. Cardio yeah. and shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Well, you know, King really originally contacted me, and the reason I got asked him to come on the show is because, you know, when I went over the George Peterson um, autopsy report, and I noticed that all the drug screening, all the steroid screenings were coming up negative for everything. The only thing the guy was on, according to the autopsy report, was testosterone, um, equipoise, which he had stopped six weeks before, but we know that it has long metabolites, and winstrel. So he was literally on winstrel and, 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 and testosterone, and he looked amazing, obviously, which, which tells you, King, that you don't really need to take that much stuff, okay, other than testosterone, to really look good for a show. I mean, do, are guys deluding themselves into thinking, hey, I got to take 14 different compounds to get ready for the Mr. Long Island? 100%. And, you know, Dave, what, what the best thing about you personally, Dave Palumbo, is you can break down the science. You can go down and say, hey, kid, let me explain to you scientifically. They don't want to hear that, Dave. <laughs> you know that, and I know that. They don't want to hear the science behind it. They just want to know, look, man, what is Rami taking? What is this guy taking? What is that guy taking? And you, when you try to explain it to them, and receptors mean nothing to them. That's why exactly I called Dave up, and I said, I said, Dave, I can't sleep. And he starts laughing, and he goes, why? I was like, you fucked me up. Peterson was on three things and everything else came out negative. That means that 75 to 80% of what he was using was fake. Yep. Nope. A yep. top professional bodybuilder on the planet was using 75% fake shit. And that goes to show you why we're here talking about this. So these motherfucking kids can wake up and realize how many times we say Palumbo says it, Aceto says it, Kamali says it, food and training. Right. food and training and then the drugs come in there and then if you want to do it this i mean yeah. for god's sakes first thing i said to you dave when we talked a couple days ago yeah. was w my first cycle was 30 tabs of syntex anadrol <laughs> that's it that's and it, i yeah. remember when i went to my training partner at the time james rest in peace uh -huh. he opened it up looked at it did the thumb test on it pushed <laughs> on it a little bit smelled it and he goes the fuck did you get this <laughs> I said, well i got it from uh, this guy who you know went to wake forest and he got it for me he goes all right well um yeah just just take one a day and make sure you drink a lot of cranberry juice <laughs> I said, okay so here's my refrigerator lined up with fucking gallons of cranberry juice because you thought you're gonna die from taking well, one anadrol a day yeah 62 pounds from 30 33 pills of anadrol wow. syntax that is 
how powerful that is what real human grade shit does right. to a body right, right, right. not this chinese garbage that these kids are taking nowadays but you know what also you have to also preface you know one of the things about george peterson you know may rest in peace that made him such a great bodybuilder was very few people could train as hard as this guy and that showed in his physique i mean when justin would tell me the workouts these guy this guy would do he was brutal in the gym. And and so when you have the stimulus, the growth stimulus from taking just even testosterone and you train like that and you eat perfectly and you have good genetics, of course, that's the magic formula. But but it is the magic. Yeah. And, 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 and one of the things that you just said, I mean, if people didn't know George, they got to know he was one of the nicest guys. He was so yeah. sweet. Yeah. Um, the first time I met George, he was going up against my client, Jason. And okay. it came down to in the Atlantic states, and came down to him and Jason for first and second wow. for the for the heavyweight class, and it was close. Yeah. It was very very close. And you would think that with the haters and the way bodybuilders are, that George would be my enemy. Right. He came up to me after prejudging and said, "Oh my God, your boy is good. Oh my God, this <laughs> That's is a humble. battle." And then every time I saw him after that, he was always asking me, "Is how's Jason? How's he?" I was like, wow, we don't have too many George no, Petersons no, in this uh, no, in the sport. Not at all. He he will be greatly missed. I really, really think he was one of the best. Yeah, I do too. Now, you uh, also told me something really interesting on the phone that I didn't even register in my head. You know, we've been seeing a lot of really, really good guys coming out of the Middle East lately, way more than we had seen 15, 20 years ago. And I'm sure, you know, technology increases like in, in, in information as far as training goes and as far as food goes is important but you made a, an interesting point these guys go to the corner pharmacy and they pick up real anabolics that are being made for humans not basement brewed stuff from mexico or from guys who make it in the bathtub in the united states do you really think that's what's been separating a lot of the middle eastern guys 100 yeah. percent. listen i'm iranian I'm from the Middle East. Of course, I'm going to sit here and say, listen, there's a reason why Iranians um, win the world championships and in weightlifting every year yeah. and win the world championships in wrestling. There's a reason that a lot of Iranians are amazing bodybuilders and their team wins the IFBB world championships, team championship every, every almost every year. Yeah, great. That's fantastic. We have great genetics and we were, mm -hmm. you know, I always say we got the best of white and we got the best of black. We, got, we just got them together in our physique. <laughs> there you go. But it's not, we're not like genetically, you know, being from, from another planet that we got these incredible. No, right. what it is, is the guys in the Middle East, especially the ones who go to, I mean, I'm, I don't know this for sure. This is my, uh, this is what I'm guessing here. Yeah. The guys who go to Kuwait, they're getting real shit. Yeah. Roly's getting real shit. Uh, Brandon's getting real shit. The guys who go there, uh, Ashkenani, he's getting real shit. I'm sure Rami is if too. We, yeah. If the American guys had the access to the real human grade stuff, you'd see that you would see these guys blowing up. Right now, the only couple, pe the only few people that I know that are actually making those types of leaps and bounds are Nick and the other guy, Brett. Is that his name? Brett Wilkins. Yeah. Brett Wilkins. Yeah. Yeah. These guys are are probably using some good human grade stuff. I'm not. I'm not. I know for a fact they're not using everything, but right. some of the stuff that they're using is human grade, and you look what happens to the bodies. Right, right, right. And and the fact that we talked about earlier, we mentioned is that really, I mean, and I talked about this with Chris Aceto, you can use testosterone and growth hormone, assuming it's real, and probably make just as good progress as if you've added 14 other compounds in on top of that, SARMs and peptides and this and that and that, that and this, right? I mean. All these other things that are now available technology-wise probably are not making that much of a difference in the physiques. I don't, I don't see it, you know. I think it's a lot of window dressing, a lot of wasted money, and a lot of, you know, when you start putting 14 different peptides in your body, there's interactions in your brain that's going on. And sometimes, you know, it's not for the better. Dave, uh, just, I'm going to ask you a question, just yeah. honestly with you. Yeah. Back, let's go to 20 years ago. How, how would you feel... Then the couple hours after you took ten IU's of Humatrope. Yeah, I never even your took, feet. I mean, I, I never like, even took ten IU's of Humatrope. I'd be honest. I gotta be honest. With your hands. <laughs> What's wrong with your hands? I'm like, I don't know, Mom. I'm just, I just, my hands are fucking numb. That was from one fucking shot of fucking Humatrope. Yeah. I don't feel that after I take right. an, an entire brick of fucking growth. I don't feel that shit. When I would take uh, the the Humatrope, like you said, from Lily. The first time, couple times I took it, my teeth, my wisdom teeth started coming in. <laughs> and I had to get them pulled. But one, 
during a prep in, I think it was 95, and then one during a prep in 96, the other one. Both top ones started coming in and moving, and they were driving me crazy, and I had to have them. And it, I'm convinced it was because I, I was on the GH. Um, that's how potent this stuff was. Yeah, it was f that and, and nootropin. And, I mean, my God, yeah. I, I can't. And the, 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 we discussed the last time that you and I talked, the, yeah. the sheen, the, the, the wind straw, the suspension. The That's suspension, suspension. They, oh my well, God. Well, then you remember when, when Oscar was getting all the, um, and, and Valentino were getting all the uh, Steris. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Steris yeah. was a company, it was a generic company in the United States. And there was a whole, I don't know how, what the connection was. Greg Valentino's told the story a million times. But they were getting bricks, 24, or I think it was 12, or 20, no, it was 24 in a shrink wrap thing. They were 10 cc bottles right from Steris, the company that makes it. It was human grade, American testosterone, propionate, sipionate, ananthate. Test suspension was in 30 cc bottles. They had HCG and they had the DECA 2, two ml bottles. That stuff was so potent because it was right. it was it was right from American pharmacy and and a lot of people couldn't get American stuff back then because it had been 1990 they made the Controlled Substance Act so a lot of the stuff was coming from Mexico and and overseas in Europe but that for that maybe four or five years that stuff was all over the the, the scene and yeah. that's when well, the guys were huge you know yeah, and Dave just out of curiosity do you ever sit down and talk to your clients about genetic potential I mean do you, do you ever sit there and say listen. I'm going to be completely fucking yeah. honest with you as your coach. Yeah. You don't have what it takes to take, to get to this level. Yeah. So don't kill yourself doing it. Right. Do you ever talk? Do you ever have that talk? I, you know, I, I try to tell my clients that number one, anyone can build muscle and anyone can get in shape. So if, that, if your goal is to get bigger and to get ripped, I can do that for you. Can I, I can't guarantee you you're going to make be a pro. I can't guarantee you you're going to win a pro show or the Olympia because I don't know genetically what you're going to look like when you add that muscle or get lean. Right. However, there were people that I will start out with or who I've, you know, Carlos Thomas, the guy who was, who won the nationals. I was working with him when he was first starting out when he was a middleweight and I worked with him for a couple of years. And I told him, I said, you will be a super heavyweight one day. I don't care that you're five, six and you will be a pro and you're going to be an excellent pro. Cause I saw, I saw the genetic potential there. It's just mm. a matter of whether you have the head for it, I said. If you right. have the head for it, you stick to your guns and just don't take shortcuts and try to, you know, do things the wrong way and you do things the right way, you're gonna make it. And and he remind right. you know, he reminded me, I told him that. I, I said it over and over and over again to him because I you could just tell he had he had it, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean I, those I've I've not I haven't met too many people like that. Yeah. Just a couple. But um, most of the people who, I, again, I blame everything on the internet. Honestly, everything, I blame 99.9% .9 of the things that are wrong with almost every aspect of life right yeah. now is all because of the internet. Yeah. People believe in too much garbage. And everyone, like, I love this one. I'm sure you get this too. Yeah. Um, I want to be pro. What can I do? Uh, can you coach me? And I'm like, well, send me pictures. I'm saying this guy must be pretty good. Yeah. It looks like an <laughs> Ethiopian fucking uh, long distance runner, you know, with with concave calves. And, uh, you know, I'm like, what are you thinking? I want to be pro. What, 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 who made you even, who said anything to you? Because, oh, I, I, I want, I've seen Kevin LaRoney's picture. He was your, Kevin LaRoney. <laughs> There's a guy who fucking looked at a fucking D-ball and gained six pounds of muscle. Right, right. I said, you got to understand genetics, man. Right. I always tell people, let's take one step at a time. Let's let's get, let's get put 15 pounds of muscle on you first. Then let's pick a show. Then let's... I try to get people away from... I said, it's good to have long-term goals, but you have to take short-term steps because if you don't, you give up. Because you can't go from that guy you just talked to me to Kevin Lavroni. If you do that, you're going to quit because... I'll tell you something. When I went to see Kevin Lavroni in 1996, he asked me to come down and help him with his prep for the Arnold Classic. I drove down with a friend of mine, a mutual friend we had, and he had six weeks before he had sent me pictures, and he and he looked like he didn't even work out. Uh, this kid brought back <laughs> pictures and showed me because there was no internet then. He he actually Polaroids. I said he's never going to make it. We go down there six weeks later, drive down, get into his house. I said, let me see what it looked like. I'm 300 pounds, mind you, big, freaky, you know. I just won the Junior Nationals. Takes off his shirt. I'm like, that's it. I might as well just quit. I really, I wanted to quit bodybuilding when I looked at what he looked like. Six yeah. weeks later, he was delts and his shoulders and his pecs and his abs and his quads. I'm like, 
What right? <laughs> what fucking right do I? Am I insane to even think that I can stand <laughs> next to this human being? And I weighed more than him. It didn't even matter. It, it, it and, and take it to the next level with Kevin. Yeah, he would show up to the to the competitors meeting at a pro show. And he'd look a little small. Yeah. And then the next day, his triceps are yeah. hanging down. I'm like, Kevin, what the fuck did you do overnight? I mean, I, it's like there are guys, these guys that, I mean, if you think you're going to be Mr. Olympia, look at a Mr. Olympia in person next to you before you say, you look at his pictures and say, yeah, I, I think I could beat that. <laughs> his receptors yeah, were it, unbelievable. It, it, again, his receptors it, were unbelievable. That's yeah. what, I mean, plus he was probably a, a, a really good at. Most of these guys are probably could have been great athletes too. Ge the lot, genetics, the genetics, the genetics. Bodybuilding is so much genetics. Now, the good thing about bodybuilding is that there's also a, a hard work, dedication, persistence component that a lot of people don't have. So you have guys with genetics like Kevin Lavroni, but don't apply themselves because they don't have that work ethic. Thank God for those people because those are the guys I was beating that I'm like I should never be beating this guy. But I right. beat them because I outworked them. But there's certain people like Ronnie Coleman, Kevin, guys that worked hard and had the genetics impossible to beat. Can't beat those guys. No. Yeah. But, and, then, and then when you spend time with them, you know, when I was young, I went to Hawaii with Nasser okay. in the year 2000. Yeah. And we had a group we of guest posing together. And I and I, the main goal for me wasn't the guest posing. I wanted to see <laughs> how Nasser lived. Right. What is what? Is, what kind of lifestyle did this mutant yeah. have to look the way he does? He never ate. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he was. He didn't eat a lot. He didn't. He didn't. He never ate food. I didn't see him eat that much. I'm sitting here with my meal replacements right. and pills and eating. He's not. He's just looking at me and just you know, then nothing. You know, he's blah, eating blah, like blah. pasta and like a little coffee. chicken breast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, he hardly drank that much water. And then when we went to the gym, he worked out, but not as insane as I was used to working out. Right. And, I was just, and I, you know, I gave that assessment to like, okay, maybe we're just here chilling in Hawaii. He right. doesn't want to train that hard. But I always, you know, said, okay, no, I, I want to see what it takes. And that's the first lesson that I got in genetics. I'm like, mm. this guy is just. A mutant. Yeah. That's it. He's a mutant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. But then you get a guy like Ronnie who's a mutant. He goes into the gym after having never trained. He shows up at Brian Dobson's gym with 20-inch arms already. And then he trains like like these other freaks at, at Metroflex. And he turns into you know the best bodybuilder of all time. You know? I, I always say to people, can as, just as a, as, a, as a fan of bodybuilding, what would – Chris Cormier look have looked oh like if God. he had Branch Warren's brain. Yeah. yeah. Can you just imagine? He would have been at least a six, seven time Mr. Olympia. Oh, easy. Easy. You know, and if Chris had that mentality. Dorian thought that. Take? Dorian trained him because he thought he was yeah. going to make him into a Mr. Olympia. But I think that was the kind of the end of Chris's career at that point. But uh, I, I hung out with Chris many. You, hey, listen, I have the distinction of being number three on the list of the best, part, the biggest partiers of all time. Me, Chris, <laughs> me, Chris, and Victor. So I I partied my ass off with Chris, and I'm telling you, he just he was in co he just coasted through the yeah. IFBB. Yeah. He coast if he would have taken it two one notch higher, right. No way, no way Jay would have beat him all those years in the no, auto class. No, Not yeah. a chance. No, he had, Not better, a he had chance. better genetics. He had better genetics, yeah. Yeah. And he had a very good he had a good mastery of how to present himself too, which was, you know, amazing. But you know what? When Chris went to the gym, he trained hard. And when he ate, he, he ate good, but you're right, he he would he'd blow it on the weekends essentially. That's what the problem was. You know? Well, it, it has I never uh, listen, I, I would never put down Tristan. Everybody has their own different training styles and like, like Vince Taylor would never, you never see Vince Taylor squatting 315. No, he wouldn't no, do it. No, he didn't He'd get to. on a machine and do about 100 reps. Yeah. But it worked for him. <laughs> you know, it worked, obviously worked for him. He's, 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 a, he's a Hall of Famer, yeah. what have you. So you can't really, you know, knock someone for the way they train and how they do things. So everybody's physique is different. But when it came to Chris, I personally, you know, hung out with him and knew him and stuff. And I just always used to say to myself, my God. And even Weinberger once said it. He said, if, if Put King's training mentality into the, into him, and no one can touch Chris. I'm like, yeah, I totally agree with you, hundred percent. Imagine Dorian's training mentality into Chris. You know? Dor listen, I, 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 Dorian, Dorian again, another guy I partied a lot with. <laughs> I, had a lot, I had a lot of fun with Dorian too, but um, but Dorian was went while he was competing, he was a monk. Yeah. You know that, Dave. Yeah. You know he just had those fucking blinders on, and he don't. 
At the end, he took him off. Yeah. I don't agree with the well, the Mike Mentzer, one spotter in the front, one spotter in the back. Yeah. You know, put the whole stack plus 245. No, I don't think that's body move. Yeah. And, it, and I, I've listened to a lot of um, Dorian's podcasts and interviews nowadays. He's finally saying it, too. He goes, yeah, yeah. That, wasn't, that wasn't very smart of me to do that. Well, he got hurt you know, because of that. He got hurt yeah, training. Of course you get hurt. I don't care who you are. You're going to get hurt. Yeah. He, Happened he, to Ronnie. But, you know, but Dorian didn't build his physique like that. So that's what people don't realize. Dorian already had the muscle when he started doing the mentor type training. So it, you, once you have that much muscle, you don't need a lot to really maintain it either. Um, I think there, but I think there are two schools of bodybuilders, guys that respond to lower volume, heavier weights. I, I definitely fall into that response, that, that group because I'm, I have a fast metabolism. And then there's guys that, that respond better to moderate weights with higher repetitions. Now, when I say moderate weight, it's still heavy, but not ridiculously heavy. You, right. No one who lifts light, aside from the few myostat negative freaks like Vince Taylor out there or Paul Delette, mm. no one grows from lifting light with you know repetitions. It just That's true. Happen. No, 100% true. My, my style of training has always been, it still is to this day. I, even though I can grab the weight and I can rep it yeah. for 10, 11 times by myself, I still tell my training partner, keep your hands on me. I like that mental feeling of yeah. someone just having their hands there, even though I don't need them. That's yeah. always been my style. And whenever yeah. I can't do it, I finish 12, 13 reps. I always go to try to get the 20 reps. That's me. 20 right. is the number. My, that is my number is 20 reps. Right. That's it. That's how I do it. And you, do you feel like you need that because you have a, like, a, I know you grow real easy, but you always had trouble getting in shape. You know, that was like a, it was harder for you to get lean. Um, the, the getting lean thing is, 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 a, is a tricky thing for me because those pictures that I would take in my kitchen and everybody used to make, you know, say, oh yeah, King's Mr. Olympia in his kitchen, but yeah. that, you know, that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, I was always, for me, it was a water game, yeah. okay? It was always water. I had, it took me a long time to figure out the water and the sodium and this and that. Like, if I could go back and give myself advice right now, I would not pull out sodium until right. when it was necessary. Yeah, I never, I never pulled it. Now, you know, see, you I imagine did. And that if, was the mistake that I was making. Can you imagine if you were competing now with the filters on Instagram, how fucking nuts you would look in, in your update <laughs> pictures? People would be like losing their mind because you know all these yeah. guys put filters on their pictures. No one's putting up it, a legitimate picture. It, it, it's fun. I mean, like last night, I was doing, I was squatting on the Smith machine and stuff, and. You know, it's like I, I train in the gym with all high school kids, and I see them all the time, and I see them, and I and I and I I love them. I love them because I remember I was that one right. day, a long right. time ago. I was doing the same thing they were doing, but I just don't have that crazy mentality to put on the five plates and yeah, God, you know, yeah. you know, I, I I just can't for some. It's just like I can't take my shirt off at a club anymore. Yeah. I feel like a fucking jackass. All right, so I can't do that anymore. <laughs> not so at fifty I years. I hope at fifty years old you're not you're not pulling a Chris right. Cormier. I put the three fifteen yeah. on and I go down all the way until my hamstrings hit my calves and then blast it back up and try to get it. And then I look at it and I'm like, you know what? If I wanted to, I could, but it's just nope. I'd love to, not gonna happen. I'd love to get together with you. Chris and Dorian and go to a club. I don't even know if they even have clubs anymore. Just <laughs> just so we can look around and say what a bunch of old motherfuckers we are right now. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, here, here, here's a here's a little thing that I don't know. I didn't want to say anything, but fuck it. I'll say it here anyway. Yeah. I haven't been to the Arnold Classic. I haven't been to the Olympia in almost 10 years now. Right. I just booked my room last night really? with my boy for the Olympia. So wow. finally... I called Dan and I said, Dan, if you need me to do any commentary or anything, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, we got you. And I was like, yeah, I think Dave will be happy if me and Aceto got up there and started there wrecking some shit too. So, <laughs> yeah. so I finally, I, I, got, I, got my, I got my little uh, plans wow. and me and G-Money will be there. So That's it should be awesome. Fun. All right, good, good, good. We can hopefully see you there. It's in Orlando, yeah. right? That's, no, they moved it back to Vegas. It's back in Vegas again. I'm, it's gonna be in Planet Fitness, a uh, Planet Hol Planet Fitness. It's gonna be Planet Hollywood Hotel. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good. Yeah. All right, that's great. What are you gonna stay in the host hotel over there? Yeah, host hotel, the whole nine yards. I'm gonna and and the, and the best part is that I can actually enjoy myself. You know? Yeah, well, there's no pressure. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no pressure and no. You know, I I I, I love those days. I miss those days. The Muscle Tech days. They were fun. Yeah. You know, I always tell people the Muscle Tech stories. They really did treat us like stars. 
But that was really a lot of work. work. You had to sit at the booth, right? Hey, the you whole- still had to work. Absolutely, you had to work. But they treated you like a fucking star. Yeah. And I miss those are those are the, one of the main things that I miss when I used to travel with these shows. Yeah. Is how Muscle Tech used to treat us. They were they were awesome. I mean, when I worked with Metric, they treated us well. But it was a lot. I mean, the the Arnold was a three day expo. It was exhausting. It was exhausting. Yeah, I don't even know how people went out after. The people would go out and, and then wake up the next morning and come to the expo. I was going to bed early because you know I was into that whole bodybuilding mindset of you know sleeping. Yeah, it was eating, called it, it was called ecstasy day. That's <laughs> how we did. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. By Sunday, exactly people were like zombies did. there. You know, the Sunday <laughs> expo. People couldn't even. Their eyes were like uh, like black by Sunday morning. You know, but anyway. Well, King, yeah. I appreciate you coming on and uh, putting out some, uh, throwing out all the rage we have out there. Guys, I think the take-home message is, number one, drugs don't build big physiques, but good drugs definitely help. And, you know, that's one thing that you really want to, you know, make sure you have. And you, I sell these um, uh, Roy test kits, uh, King, on DavePalumbo.com, as you know. And, you know, I, I, have to, I was just telling people on Ask Dave earlier that 50% of the GH out there is fake. Because I, I have all these guys reporting. To no, me. no, no, no! You're, you're just saying that because you want people <laughs> to buy your stuff, dude. <laughs> right. That's, That's it. it. You know, you're saying that. My I, God, if if I were you, I, you know, God bless. It, you know, may he rest in peace, with George. Yeah. But even in passing, he came back and he proved something. Yeah. It half the shit, most of the sh- out the shit out there is fucking. Fake, yeah. man. Test it, test it, test it, test it. You know, and, and, and I said to you on the phone, this is the first thing, and the, one of the main things I said to you on the phone when we talked, I said, Dave, if you go, you can't win here. It, it, with you, you it, you're always like, you're fucked if you're doing it, you're fucked if you don't. Right. If you go out there and you tell these kids the truth, they're like, oh, he just wants to sell those kids. <laughs> right. No, they're fucking fake. Okay, go. You know what? I'll say it for you, Dave. Okay. Hey, hey kids out there, don't buy Dave stuff. Go use <laughs> fake shit. Please. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> go go to your local douchebag. Uh, go to Kenny, the guy who sells you your yeah. shit at the gym, all right? And tell, <laughs> and tell Kenny how Fucking great this Kenny. stuff is. That's not how it works. Because I'll tell you one thing right now. If you take a shot, a real shot of Cipionate, 200 milligrams of Cipionate, you want to fuck every hole you see ever for the first se- That's how yeah, you good. feel when you take Cipionate. You, are, you, walk, you wake up in the morning and you got to smack your cock around just so you can come down. That's the real shit, not the crap. That you, but you know what? Don't buy, don't buy Dave's stuff. You know, Kate, have you, you noticed that a lot? I, I don't know if you've noticed that a lot of people contact me and say they have erectile dysfunction, they have no sex drive, and they're supposedly on 2,000 milligrams of, of, of testosterone a week. I'm like, I never possible? heard I never heard of people, no one in my day and age when I was competing ever had erectile dysfunction taking testosterone. I, I it just doesn't happen. I don't know what the Dave, problem is. Dave, I get the same people thing. are on estrogen blockers and, and burgaline for the for prolactin. They're inhibiting everything. I, I I don't know if they're inhibiting too many things or they're just using fake crap, you know. It, 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 you know, I, I, and, and you laugh and we're all laughing right yeah. now, but there's nothing that we can, no matter what we say, and you know, I'm not going to mention names. I will soon, but not now, of people <laughs> who like to put you down, who like to say shit, or he's just trying to do this, he's just yeah. doing that. What the fuck does Dave Palumbo care if your dick goes up or goes down? <laughs> I, who cares? <laughs> he's, trying, he's trying to tell you, hey, dude, if you want to know your shit is real, here, here you go. Here's the kit, right. go test it. Right. Now that we know from George, 70 to 80% of the stuff that that poor kid was taking yeah. was fake. Right. That's fucked up. Who know, and yeah. who, know, who knows what was even in there? Maybe there was something that was, you know, there was no good in there. I don't know. But why not go to a regular, like a tight medical? Yeah, but you can't, something? you can't get can't, the dosages yeah. these guys use in, in, in a, like a hormone replacement lab. You're only going to get like, you know, 200 milligrams a week. But the the, the trick that's is that not this, enough. This, no, that's not enough. There's kids out. There's, I mean, there's kits out there that we sell that, that you can test your stuff. Just don't waste your money. That's it's that simple. It really is. But anyway, King, thank you for joining us today. It was real fun, and you sat in. You did a great job. I'm sure Lee Priest will watch the show and love it. Uh, George, Mr. G, thank you for stopping by. You were uh, here all day at the uh, studio with us. And uh, thanks for the protein bagels and cookies. King, you'll send me your address. We'll send you a nice care package. All right, brothers. Love all you guys. Right. Hey, That's King, gonna... you look good. You still look like a cake, man. Look at <laughs> the teeth and the head, dude, man. Look at this age. guy. I do not age. Hollywood, baby. His, hair, his, <laughs> hair, his, <laughs> his hairline re- receded at least a half an inch, I think. I got a two head. What are you talking about? <laughs> I got a two head still. I'm all right. <laughs> Dave Palumbo with King Kamali and Mr. G. We'll see you next week. All right, Peace. King.
Great show.